Hey everybody, uh, I want to show you how to solve this pizzazz worksheet that you got earlier in the week. Hopefully you have already seen the video reviewing how to do basic ratios. And uh, if you've done that, this should be very easy. I am under a time constraint. The software I'm using, Screencastify, only allows you to have a 10 minutes or less video. So I'm gonna be moving fairly quick, but feel free to use that pause button go back, rewind, right? Here's something, again, make sure I'm getting everything right. Make sure you understand, okay? Here we go. First off, the question is, what happened when there was a kidnapping at Bazaar Middle School? Hmm, I have a feeling this is gonna be funny. Anyway, uh, if you have this worksheet, remember, I always have you go to the bottom, find the topic, and circle what the topic is. In this case, it's ratio. When you do that, you will find out that you learn the language of math a little bit better. Remember, uh, when you test, it's not good enough just to know how to do something. You want to know what it is that you're doing and what it's called. So in my class, you need to be both bilingual. You can speak mathish and English. And if you speak Spanish or another language, you might be trilingual. Okay, very cool. Anyway, always read the direction carefully and underline important words. Um, simplest form, remember if you watch the video, uh, ratios are similar to fractions. If you can simplify it, you probably should, okay? Even if it doesn't ask, it's just easier when you do that, okay? So I'm gonna find all these ratios right in simplest form and then find the answer at the bottom and put the letter of that uh, problem right, O-T-E-E-H-M, uh, in the box that has the answer. When I do look at the bottom, I notice that all of these ratios are written to look like fractions. Remember, there are three ways to write ratios. We'll review that up here real quick. This first section, I'm talking about circles, squares, and stars. When I count all the circles, I notice there's seven. When I count all the squares, there are six. When I count all the stars, there are five. That's going to help me because when I tell you to do ratios, one of the things I say makes everything easy is to write down in words what they're asking first and then put a number above each word. So, if they're asking for a ratio of stars to squares, I count all the stars, I get five. I count all the squares, I get six. The ratio is five to six. Remember three different ways of writing it. The second way is with a colon and you read it just like the first way, five to six. The third way is like a fraction. Since all of these are written, the answers in a form of a fraction, those ratios, I'm going to do that from now on, okay? I am going to do that first step, though, and take advantage that they've already written what they want in words. I'm going to fill in the number right above that to make it easy. So I'll end up writing these ratios two different ways. Squares to circles, six to seven. Okay. Stars to circles, five to seven. Circles to stars, seven to five stars to all figures. Now that's a little tricky because I need to count all of those. I'm gonna include the stars and all figures because they're part of them, right? Seven and six and five is just like three sixes, that's 18. So all figures is 18. Stars to all figures is five to 18. And squares to all figures is six to 18. Now, the only tricky thing about this whole section is when you see that 6 over 18, you might hopefully recognize that you can simplify that, right? 6 goes into the top once, and it goes into 18 three times. So the ratio of 6 to 18 is equivalent or equal to the ratio of 1 to 3. I won't find 6 18 down here at the bottom. I will find 1 over 3, though, 1 to 3. 1 over 3, 1 to 3 is E, okay? Other problems, T was 5 to 18. That's the very first box. O was 7 to 5. There it is there, an O. And then EHM, 5, 6 for the E. There it is. Uh, H was 6 over 7. 
and M was 5 over 7. On to the second section. Now we're talking about a TV screen that is 15 inches high. That's going to be the height. I'm going to go ahead and put 15 there. And uh, 20 inches wide. So 20 is the width. That's how wide something is. It has the W I D just like wide. So the first one's going to be 15 to 20. And the second one's going to be 20 to 15. Hopefully you recognize 5 fits into both 20 and 15. So this one simplifies 3 to 4. And this one, 4 to 3. Those numbers are just, some people call it opposites. The correct way to write that, or to say that, those two numbers are multiplicative inverses, right? You multiply 4 over 3 times 3 over 4, you get 12 over 12, which is equal to 1, right? also known as reciprocals. On to this, H is 3 to 4. Look for 3 to 4. That's 4 to 3. I might need that. That's an H. And the A is the 4 to 3. I recognize that. On to the third section. Length to width. The magazine is 24 centimeters wide. That's the width, W. And 16 inches. I'm sorry. 16 centimeters wide. And 24 long. I got confused because this is the width and sometimes I want to make the length be longer than the width but the way that picture's uh, drawn I have 24 being the width. Uh, 24 long. Okay uh, so here we go. I think I misspoke there. When you see 24 over 16 or 16 over 24 Hopefully you recognize you can simplify it. You know that 8 goes into it. If you didn't know 8 went into it and you just said, hey, I know 4 goes into it, you'd say 4 goes into 24 six times, into 16 four times, and hopefully you recognize you can simplify it some more. Uh, 2 goes into 6 three times and 4 two times. But if you knew an 8 fit into both, you can do it in one step advantage of knowing the greatest common factor instead of just a common factor. Back to our decoding. E is going to be 3 over 2. And P is going to be 2 over 3. All the way at the bottom, the back. On to the next section. 30 students in a class, 16 boys. How many girls? Well, there's 30 minus the 16 boys is going to be 14 girls, right? So girls are 14, boys are 16, and the next question it's asking is all students, that's going to be the 30. When I write these, I recognize I can simplify most. 2 goes into 14 7 times, into 16 8 times, so H is going to be 7 over 8. And 14 over 30. 2 goes into 14 7 times, 30 15 times. 7 to 15 is an E. 16 to 14, 2 goes into the top 8 times, the bottom 7. 8 to 7 ratio is going to be an R. And that last one, 16 to 30. Two goes into 16 eight times and to 30 15 times. So eight to 15 is going to be an I. Second to last section, height of the monster to the length of its shadow. The height is how tall it is. That's 36. And the shadow is 40. 36 over 40, hopefully you recognize 4 goes into the top and bottom, simplifies 9 to 10, and this is 10 to 9. So 9 to 10 is T, and 10 to 9 is W. Last section, you have to count every single gear here. Well, I've already done this, so I'm going to tell you right now there are 12 teeth 
in that gear. There's 24 in the big one and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in Z. So the gear of X is 12. The gear of Y is 24. And 12 over 24 simplifies 1 to 2. That's going to be the C. Uh, the first two words is the teacher. Y to Z, I have 24 to 6, which simplifies to 4 to 1. Remember, what is that called if it's a 1 on the bottom? Not just a ratio, a special ratio called a rate. And the last one, X to Z, I have 12 to 6. And that also gets us a special ratio simplified. 2 to 1 is the K. The answer to the question, what happened when there was a kidnapping at Bizarre Middle School? A kidnapping. Sometimes when you say it like that, the joke gets a little easier. The teacher woke him up. But um bum All right. Hopefully this is under 10 minutes. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It looks like it's not 11.07. Oh,